All right, in this project, we're going to create a little quiz application. So we have this question here, which language runs in a web browser? And we have some answers, some multiple choice. We're going to go ahead and choose JavaScript and submit. And it's going to take us to the next question. What does CSS stand for? Central style sheets, cascading style sheets, cascading simple sheets, cars, SUVs, sailboats. We'll go ahead and choose cars, cars SUV, sailboats. And then what does HTML stand for? hypertext markup language and then what year was JavaScript launch which was 1995 and you can see we answered three out of four questions correctly and we can reload the quiz so pre it's pretty simple in terms of functionality um, what we'll do is create like a basic template that we can use to insert the questions and answers using a JavaScript array and then we'll add the functionality to select an answer and check it and so on add to the score and increment it so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's start on the HTML for our quiz. Title will say quiz app. And essentially what we're gonna do is just have a, a, a placeholder, kind of a placeholder for a question. It'll be an H2, we'll give it an ID, and then we'll have a bunch of radio inputs for the answer, and those will also be placeholders. And then later on when we get to the JavaScript, we will replace the placeholders with the actual questions and answers and we'll use that as basically as like a template for each one and then we can have as many question answers as we want so let's start off by just creating a quiz container and i'm going to give this an id of quiz and then we'll have a, a class of quiz header and inside here we'll have our question which is going to be an h2 with an id of question and i'm just going to like i said put a placeholder here we'll just say question text and then under that we'll have a ul with some list items and each list item will have a radio input not radius radio input with a name of answer and then the id is going to be a for this one and let's see we also want do class of answer and that should be good then underneath it we're going to have a label four is going to match the ID of the input which is a and let's also give this an ID of a underscore text because we're going to insert the question in here we'll just say question for now so basically we just want to copy this and each question will have four answers so that's one two three four and then we just want to change some of this stuff so the second one so we want the name to be answer for all of them but the id is going to change so that's going to be b and the four attribute on the label as well is going to be b and then the id here is going to be b text and then we want to do the same here so let's go here here in here and let's change that to C and then we'll go here here and here and that's gonna be D okay and then we want a submit button that's gonna go outside of the header so right here and let's add a button we're gonna give this an ID of submit and we'll say submit all right so it doesn't look very good right now but we're going to go ahead and add the css which isn't too bad so let's jump into our style sheet and we're going to use the poppins font so i'm going to say let's see css2 question mark family and let's set this to poppins and then let's do a weight so wght say at and then 200 semicolon 400 I'm going to change the body font to that poppins all right so we want uh, we also want a background color on the body so let's set that background color is going to be hexadecimal value B 8 C 6 db okay and then let's add 
Actually, that'll be the background color. We're, we're going to use a gradient, a linear gradient for browsers that support that. So let's use background image and set linear gradient and we'll do 315 degrees. And the colors for this, the first one, let's do hexadecimal. Actually, it's going to be the same color here. So we want to do that at 0% and then comma. And the next color will be F five F seven F a to a hundred percent. So it gives it just a little bit of a gradient look. And then we have our flex box. We can get rid of uh, flex direction column. And let's see line items. That's good. The rest should be okay. So now the quiz container, which wraps around everything, So for that, I'm going to set the background color to white. And let's give this a border radius of 10 pixels. And let's do a box shadow. So for box shadow, we'll do 0, 0 for the offsets, 10 pixels, 2 pixels, and then RGBA. And the color will be 100. 100, 100, and then for the alpha value will be 0 0.1. Okay, let's set a width here as well of 600 pixels. And then I'm going to set an overflow of hidden so nothing goes out of the container. And then for the for the header, remember this whole part is the quiz header and then you have the button below it. So let's say for the quiz header class, I want some padding and we'll just do four rem, which is going to be four times whatever the, the root HTML elements font size is. And then for the H2, which is the question, we'll style that. Let's do padding. We'll do one rem. And let's do text align to the center and get rid of any margin. And then for the UL, we don't want any bullet points. So let's set list style type to none. And let's set padding to zero. OK, now for the list items, say UI LI or UL LI. And I'm going to set the font size to be a little bigger. Let's do 1.2. Yeah, 1.2 rem. And then we'll set the margin on that to be one rem on the top and bottom, zero on the left and right. And for the label, so UL LI label, I just want to make the cursor into a pointer. All right. So if we hover over these, we get our, you know, our pointer. So last thing we want to style is the button. So we'll just grab button. Let's set a background color. And that's going to be 8 E 4 4 A D. And then let's take away any border. So we'll set border to none. Let's also make the color of the text white. And we want to display this as a block level element. And I want it to go all the way across, so we'll set the width to 100 percent. And let's make the cursor into a pointer. Oops. And for the font size, I'm going to make that 1.1 rem unit. And then let's see for the font family. We just want to inherit so that we use that Poppins font. And then the padding for the button is going to be 1.3 rem. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now for the hover, let's say button, and when it's in its hover state, I want to change the background color. And I'm going to change it to 732 D91 on hover. Okay, so it's just a little darker. Uh, and then 
I want to get rid of see this outline when it's in its focus state. I want to get rid of that. So let's say button in its focus state. Let's set the outline to none. And I'm also going to set the background color to 5E3 and 370. All right. Cool. So the CSS is done. We have basically just a template here that we're going to use. And in the next video, we'll have our questions in a JavaScript array. And we want to basically replace it. We want to be able to, um, you know, have a correct answer for each question and check that we want to be able to submit and load the next question. So we'll get into that next. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and make this quiz function. We just have the UI for it now. So for the quiz, for the questions and all that, it's going to go into an array and I'm just going to paste this in because I don't want to just type all this out. And basically we have uh, just a variable called quiz data. It's an array of objects that has a question and it has an A, B, C, D answer. And then it also has a correct. So the correct is obviously going to be whichever one of these is correct. And we just have some simple questions here. Which language runs in a web browser? What does CSS, HTML stand for? What year is JavaScript launch? Obviously, you can change this, um, but we're going to go ahead and go with these questions. Now, let's bring in everything we need. First of all, we need the quiz itself, which wraps around everything. So let's do document dot get element by D and we're going to get the ID of quiz. Now for the answers, let's say const and we'll call this answer L. So answer elements and we want to use document dot query selector all because there's more than one. Remember, each of these has a, a, a class of answer. So that's what we want to get here. So let's say class of answer and then we want the question element. So let's say const question element and that's going to be document dot get element by D and the H2 the question has a uh, an ID of question. Now we want all the the answer IDs. So basically, you know, a a text through D text. So let's say const a underscore text and set that to document dot get element by D and that's going to be a underscore text and then I'm going to copy this down three more times. So this one, this one, let's change that to B. This one and this one will change to C. This one and this one will change to D. Okay, and then finally we just need the submit button. So let's say const submit BTN and let's set that to document dot get element by D and we're going to get the ID of submit. Okay, so that's everything we need for now. Uh, we need an index of basically the question or, or the current quiz. I guess each one of these pages and each one of these is going to be uh, a quiz. So let's say const and we want the current quiz, which is going to st always start at zero, right? Because it's an array, it's going to zero. It starts at a zero index. And uh, actually, we're going to set this this is going to change and be reassigned. So we want to use let here and then let's also create a variable for the score, which obviously starts at zero. And then we're going to call load quiz, which is a function that we're going to create right now. So load quiz, we want to get the current quiz data. So let's say const current quiz data and we'll set that to quiz data, which is the array that we have above. And then the index for this is going to be the current quiz value. So this right here, which is initially set to zero. All right, then we want to get the question element. So question L actually that should be a lowercase L. Okay, so question element inner text and we're going to set that to whatever the current uh, current quiz data question is because current quiz data is one of the 
objects in the array and we have a question value. So that's what we're getting here. And we're going to put it into that in our text. So if I save, we're going to see the first one here, which language runs in a web browser. If I change the current quiz to two, we're going to see the second question. All right. I'm sorry. That would be the third one would be the second question. Okay. now for the uh, for the answers, remember, we have a underscore text and we're going to set the inner text and let's set that to current quiz data dot a because if we look in you know, if we look up here, each one of these has an a value. That's what we're getting here. and putting it into the a underscore text ID. We want to do the same for the other three. So that'll be B. And this will be B text. C text will be current quiz data dot C. And then this one will be D. Now, one issue we're going to have when we add our, our event listener on the submit and we load the next quiz or the next you know, question answer set um, we're going to have the something selected and we want to deselect everything beforehand. So right when we load the, load the quiz here, let's called let's call deselect answers and then we'll create that function down here. So deselect answers and this is pretty simple. We have we already have our answers elements, which is a node list because we use query selector all. And we just want to loop through. So for each and we'll say for each answer element, then let's set the and that particular answer element. We want to set the checked value equal to false, which will remove any checks or any selections. All right. Now let's add an event listener. So we have our submit button. We want to add an event listener. So we want to listen for a click event. And when it's clicked, we're going to call a function and we need to get the answer. So let's say const answer and we'll set that to a function called get selected and we'll put that function right up here. Get selected and I'm going to initialize answer. So I'm just going to initialize this variable. and then take the answer elements and loop through. So for each answer for each answer element, then I want to check to see which one is checked. So we'll do an if statement here and just say if that particular answer element dot checked, which gives us a true or false, then let's set answer equal to the answer element dot ID. Okay, we're going to set it to whatever the ID is. And then after this for each here, we're just going to return the answer. All right, so that will get us the answer. Um, in fact, let's test that out if we do a console log of answer. And then I'm going to go over here, open up my console. I'm going to choose C, which is obviously wrong. But you can see that it logs B. Python is C. Java is A. JavaScript is D. So we're getting the not the correct answer, but we're getting the answer that's selected. So now we want to match that with the correct answer. So let's get rid of that. And we'll say if there's an answer. So if answer, then we want to check to see if the answer is equal to the correct answer, which remember is in the array. So we can use quiz data and we want whatever the current quiz is. So we pass in that current quiz index, which starts at zero and we want to check the correct value. So if the answer that we select is equal to that, then we know that that's correct. So we want to take the score and just increment it by one. So just score plus plus. Okay, then we want to go on to the next quiz. So I'm basically saying each each of these screens is a quiz. So we'll take the current quiz and we'll just increment it to move on to the next. Now let's check to see if the current quiz is less than the length of the array. So if if it's less than the quiz data dot length, that means we're not at the end. So we want to once again called load quiz. 
else, so that means that we're at the end, we answered the last question, then I'm going to take the quiz element, which is just the entire wrapper, and I'm going to set the inner HTML, and let's set that to some back ticks. And in here we'll put an H2 and just say you answered correctly at and then we're going to put the score. So in here, so score slash and then whatever the length of the, the quiz is. So we can get that with the array, which is quiz data and then the length. So it'll be like, you know, three out of four or, or whatever and then just put questions and end our h2. Okay, and then let's have a, a reload button. So right under the h2, we'll have a button and we'll just do an inline on click here and set that to location dot reload, which will just reload the page and it will start over and we'll say reload. Oops. All right. So let's save it. Let's try it out. I'm just going to reload this and let's go ahead and select JavaScript. So what does CSS stands stand for? I'm going to choose the wrong answer on purpose here. HTML stand for choose the right answer. JavaScript, I'll choose the right answer and submit. And you can see I answered correctly at three out of four questions. Let's rephrase that you answered three out of four questions correctly. OK, and just to show you that the reload button works, I'm just going to choose a bunch of wrong answers here. And if I click reload, it starts the quiz over. All right. So very simple little application. Uh, obviously, you could add much more to this. And if you wanted to add more questions, all you would do is add to this array. OK, and you could have these questions coming from some kind of database coming from some kind of API. Uh, but that's it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one.